welcome to Playing with Engagement. This is going to be a, um, no way, um, <laughs> sorry about that. This is going to be an engagement, um, engaging opportunity for you to um, practice some things, remind yourself of some things, and, and have some fun, I hope. It would be really helpful if you have a smartphone available to you or a other laptop, tablet, anything like that would be helpful for some of the interactions, which will be very simple. So welcome, and we're going to do an icebreaker activity. Our job is to explore engagement. Visual, we we'll use visual thesaurus and some brain rules, some practices, some research and resources, and thanks. So first off, welcome. My name is Vicki Butler. I am the Dean for the School of Education. Um, and I have this opportunity to jump in and do some playing with you guys tonight. First off, what I'd like you to do is to go to www.menti.com. Share in my screen so you'll see what you're going to do. You're going to go to menti.com. And you are going to please put in the number 174954. It's menti.com. It doesn't cost anything. This is a free interactive tool. We're going to be using it throughout this for part of our discussion. So after a long day, which emoji represents you at the end of the work week? Oh, yay! One person is really happy. Anybody else? How, how do you feel at the end of the work day? Oh, someone's tired. Two people are tired. One person is weak. We don't have any cranky people, so that's pretty good. This is a really simple tool to engage with, and you can engage hundreds of people, um, including students in your classes with this. If you keep this on, it will then advance. You click on the slide over there. It will advance to our next questions as we go along. But I'm going to cue you on those, OK? Oh, there we go. Someone's feeling rich at the end of the day. Oh, we do have someone who's grumpy at the end of the day. But more people tired. OK. You can keep responding throughout, the end, throughout this presentation using this. I'm going to slip back to our PowerPoint. So it's just menti.com. Very simple to use. So I want you to think about engagement is, what is engagement? If you haven't used the visual thesaurus, it's a great tool to use. And we're going to not do that. It's already open, so I'm just going to share it with you. The advantages of being shared. Okay. This is an interactive thesaurus. So we're going to look at the word engagement. And if I'm looking at engagement, I'm going to make this bright big. I can find a variety of different ways, words, that would go with it. Involvement, inter interlocking, employment. We're not really talking about that. Appointment. But I can come up here to these nouns, and I can take a look at the active Sorry to interrupt, Vicki. The screen share paused. Um, we need to go back to collaborate and start the screen share. Oh. I apologize. It's OK. You know what? In life, you have to deal with exactly those things. So hang on. Screen share paused. Entire screen share. In my former life, I was an academic tech person. so. Not a problem with these things when they go crazy. 
The idea being that you can pull these words, you can do a variety of things, have people explore them. What are we talking about? Um, as we're going forward and playing with learning. So with that idea, I'm going to flip back here and see the automatic share button. I want you to move to the next menti. Just go straight to the next slide and tell me, what does engagement look like to you? What does engagement look like? <coughs> What does it look like? I'm going to move ahead. Oh, we've got people there still. I'm going to hide the image. What does engagement look like? In this particular one, you're just going to write a quick response. And you can add as many interaction, shared ideas, interesting. Keep going. Keep populating. Oh, there we go. Light bulb. There was a really good meme about a light bulb. It was very good. Dialogue is huge. What else? Think about your class. How do you know your students are truly participating, they're engaged. What does that look like? Laughter. Laughter is great. I would put up there a sense of, of ownership and play. Anything else that would go up there for you? Those that are really standing out are ones that have that have um, more, not more value, but have a heavier weight because more people have said those going forward. Okay. Just in case. We're going forward here. With that engagement, I'm sure you've heard of John Medina and his brain rolls. There's also a web blog uh, armed with a book by Kirsty Kare. They talk about how, how do you take that brain and learning and engagement and what do we have to do. So this is just a few of the ones, there are 12 steps, but we're only going to look at a couple of them because videos and audio don't necessarily work with, with Blackboard. These links when you get the presentation are live and you'll be able to play with them yourself. So survival, think about your classrooms. You think of it as a place of survival. It really is. If someone does not feel safe with a teacher or boss, he or she may not perform as well. OK, we may just um, go back just a second. Sorry, screen share decided it wasn't going to let me play. It's OK. I am just going to trust you guys on the playing part, okay? But it is. And I'm going to go back. So, nice to be able to be safe. You may not, if you're not feeling safe in your classroom or misunderstood, it's really hard to engage and connect. We need to we provide that safe spot where people aren't in isolation, not learning in isolation either. We talk about wiring, and we all know that every brain has a totally different wiring set. You can, you can have, the more you practice, the more connections you make within your brain. Um, in the little video, they talk about, uh, if you like Jennifer Anston, anyways, the Friends girl, 
and you really like her and you keep seeing things with her, you create your own pathway for that. So imagine what you could do with an action research paper. If you keep working and working, you create your own action research neuron there going forward. But it's where we take a look at everyone and all the differentiations they have within their, within their brain and then bringing those to our classroom multiplied by X number of students Lots of wiring going on. And attention. Attention. So what is attention? How does attention work? And I'm sure this is going to do a stop sharing, but I'm going to bring it back to sharing as soon as we as soon as that happens. I'm getting the pattern of it, okay? It's Blackboard. Blackboard really doesn't like me, I think, sometimes. So in fact. It's not going to let me go back. Yeah, there we go. So let's take a look at that next mentee. What are the things that are attention distractions and attention enhancers in your classroom learning environment? Live classes, mixed mode classes, online classes. Right now, I could put up there attention distractions are when Blackboard chooses to not collaborate with me. <laughs> what are the things that enhance? And I'm sure you'll let us know if you're if it's not sharing. Any enhancements there? Great visuals. Those are attention enhancers. I've been told that sometimes other obligations, oh my gosh. That's true. Other obligations of teachers and students are true distractions. What else? What captures you? What captures your, your students in a class? Ah, real life examples. Never fear, we're coming to screen share again. Oh good, one-way communication. Is that a distraction or an enhancer? Lack of sleep, not feeling safe. We go back to the brain rules. Exercise, couple more. Leave your compost more than one. So you could imagine how this could fill up completely with your ideas. And then you can go back and sort. Why is it this way? How do you use this to inform your practices in your classroom? OK, dare I switch? OK, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Would it, Brian, would it be better if I just stayed within the, um, no, it's not going to be better. Never mind. It's OK. I am totally. You teach for so long, you can do anything you want. Rules and memory. Repeat, 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 repeat. Um, in the future school, every third or fourth day would be reserved for reviewing the facts delivered in the previous 72 and 96 hours. We don't have the luxury of having a day-to-day -day class, but how in your class do you manage to incorporate the strategies that put things into short-term memory and transfer them into long-term memory? And then sensory integration. When you get this video, go back and do this. When you get this presentation, go back. This is a very interesting um, John Medina kind of experiment piece. But sensory integration, how do we pull in that multi-sensory sensory presentation? Think of your tactile, your visual learners, all of those pieces coming in. Really playing with that. You're going to have a chance to respond in a minute. I want to make sure I don't have my mouse on there. And then vision. Vision is key. It's the part that holds everything together. And I know you've seen screen share stop. Um, I'm just going to leave it at this point, I think. Uh, I need a shortcut button. It's OK, though. We're good. OK. 
Okay. I'm just going to leave it in this mode for you so that we don't have to worry. Maybe that will work. So the idea of I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. So the vision is the I see and I remember. It's putting that in, into play. And then we go to exploration. How do you build that? How do you scaffold your information so that you can play, you can go out and explore? How do you bring that to your real world experiences in your classroom? What happens with that? How does that go for you? Okay, so we still have shared screen. I'm feeling pretty positive here. So with that part, of course then, ah, messy thoughts about rules. And that was just a really quick run through. Rule, brain rules and engagement. Let's see, fingers crossed. Is it going to let me go? Please do stay sharing. I'm switching to the next slide. What are your thoughts about rules and engagement? Does it make sense that vision and memory would be an important part of those brain rules? About the wiring, how would you put that together? How have you seen that in action in your classrooms? Give you a minute here. You could also call out if you want. That's perfectly fine. Unmute yourself and call out. We're OK. Oh, I see something. Let me hide my image. If it's boring, students don't engage. That's the whole attention thing. They're hungry, students don't engage. That's the survival piece. Oh, no. Think about your class. Think about your, if you're teaching an online class, how do you know if students are engaged or not? Personal meetings. Absolutely. It has to have personal meaning. How do you know if you're engaged? In a face-to-face in a -face class, there are a lot of visual cues to that. Thoughts and ideas. Ah, soliciting feedback from students besides the EOCEs during the quarter. I use the muddiest point, which is one of the classroom assessment teams. What's the muddiest point? Oh, you have to speak up on that one. I need to hear. Or you can save it to the discussion part, but I want to hear about yes. the muddiest point. Uh, yeah, this is the same. The muddiest point is what? Usually, I'm we are asking students to read the materials before come to class. And then I put into the uh, some kind of a uh, quiz that is a ask one of the quiz is asking which part you could not understand or if you understood everything which part was more interesting before class or even online class before Tuesday midnight then I can collect their feedback and then usually I can find uh, 60 to 70 students that they have a similar point they could not understand so those are part Usually in my uh, lecture or my uh, lecture slide, I want to emphasize that. That by using that techniques, then I can see the, how much students they are prepared before come to class. Means especially on campus, they can be engaged uh, because Perfect. they prepare. That's, yeah. that's really helpful. And it kind of eases that right into the transition of, of sort of the research and student engagement. There's a national survey of student engagement, um, and it talks about two critical features of collegiate quality. The one is the amount of time and effort students put into their studies um, and other educationally purposeful activities. And the second is how the institution uses its resources and organizes the curriculum. So 
So I'm actually going to, there's engagement indicators. They're really looking at academic challenge, learning with peers, experiences with faculty and campus assess, and ca campus environment. All really important parts of engagement across a campus, across a classroom, across, across activities that, individual lessons that you're doing. So right now, I'm going to flip back to stay in Menti. We're going to stay in Menti for a few more minutes here. Um, from a student's per perspective, during the school year, how often have your students, and you're just going to rate them, um, there's the scale there, <laughs> ask questions or contributed to discussions, and you can read these, prepare two or more drafts before they turn something in, ask another student for help. Think about, put yourself in your student place. Do your students do these never, very often? There we go. So work collaboratively. Prepare two or more drafts. I agree. I don't think um, I don't think they ever prepare two or more drafts. That's kind of where life is. But they ought to. Back to share. And okay, we're going to stay in this mode. So good things to think about to ask yourself in your classroom. How does this go? Oh, contributions to discussions. I'm going to flip to the next mentee. Next question, and during the school year, this is your, from your perspective, how much is your coursework emphasized memorizing course material, applying facts, theories, methods to practical problems, analyzing an, um, an idea, uh, experience in depth, evaluating a point of view, decision, or info source. Where does your teaching go? What do you emphasize, just of this small list, the actual survey has like four pages of uh, things to work with. But where do you lie? What's important? And it doesn't always depend on the content. What do you work with? There we go. Yeah. So many different ways to put things together, but what I see here is a pattern of people taking ownership and, in, and really going forward with that, which is pretty awesome. Uh, these results will be downloadable, too. I'll make sure you get those. And I'm coming to the end. I have one minute. So <laughs> my, uh, my piece would be, I don't want to lose you. Uh, Throughout the rest, there's a variety of ways that we engage in higher ed practices. What I've posted in here, just for your enjoyment, go and take a look at some of the resources that I put in. That would be absolutely wonderful. And I think I have to say thank you. And uh, Brian's going to make me leave the room. <laughs> well, you can hang out with me for a moment. Um, let, that was really great. Let's everyone give a virtual round of applause to Vicki. Yay. Yay. And you can, you can, if you want, you can still um, work with the mentee through the rest of the night and put your own thoughts and ideas. You can share it with someone. Just ask them to punch in that code. And let's see what happens. Like kind of a very large collaboration project. Awesome. Cool. And then um, I've posted a link to an evaluation form for this session. So let's um, give some feedback. We'd love to have that. And there's also a link to the conference schedule um, so that you can check that out and decide where your next adventure is going to be. And thank you all very much. Thanks. Thank you, Vicki. You're welcome, Brian. <laughs>